Hi everybody, I'm the new Dennis Woodruff. Welcome to my show. Oh, hi everybody, it's me, Dennis Woodruff. You know, my show is doing very well today. And these days, you know, I'm very popular. And uh, to reward myself for all my hard work, I bought myself a Rolls Royce. You know, things can't get any better than this. Keep watching The Dennis Woodruff Show. Introduce yourself. You're on The Dennis Woodruff Show. Oh, hi, Dennis. I I'm Alex Rocco. This is my wife, Shannon Wilcox. Hi. What a lovely couple. Tell us your story about what you guys do and your claim uh, to fame. Well, my wife, Shannon, is a model, a writer, a producer. My claim to fame would be uh, Mo Green from The Godfather. I got shot in the eye. I know, I know. And uh, been doing it for about 40 years. Right. And uh, everything is good, you know. Life is good. Yeah, you just caught us. We're going over to Paradigm to see what's cooking. I heard you like to, you guys like to have a little Sunday brunch over at the Beverly Hills Polo Lounge sometimes. Yes, yes. And that's one of your favorites, is that yeah, true? Yeah, I'm, I'm a people watcher. You know, I, as long as I've been in this business, I get excited when I see a celebrity. I go, oh my God, I'm this kid from Somerville, Mass, who never grew up, and thank God. This is, uh, this is a really wonderful moment for me on the Dennis Woodruff Show, and you know, I'm having a lot of fun going around and doing my show and meeting famous people like you guys and hanging out. And you know, a lot of people don't know that I have my own show now. Uh, tell me what you're doing now, current projects. Do you have uh, some things am, going on? Uh, Are you doing any more films? You know? She's got two commercials running for Christmas. She's got a... a Oh, she's got Walmart running for Christmas, and she's got LL Bean, and uh, I, I just finished our R8 for Audi. Uh, it was on the Super Bowl, uh -huh. you know, the horse's head, and uh, name and, some uh, of your films that you're most proud of. Uh, the Voices for MGM with uh, 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 God, I forgot her name, a Amy Irving, right? And uh, the Wedding Planner, the Wedding Planner with J Lo. Tom Hanks, that thing you do, he directed me in. Right. And it goes on and on. I know, oh, you know. Find if I, me guilty, honey. Find, find me, me guilty, Sidney Lumet. Thank you. I forgot about that. You are the illegitimate son of Howard Hughes. How did that happen? Now, what happened was Howard was in when you when you hear about uh, uh, Catherine Hedburn, uh, she had a son, and no one knows what happened to him. I am I do not know exactly who my mother is, but I'm thinking at this time that could be it. No one really knows. We haven't gone that far into the executive. I do carry a military number from Israel and a star. Also, as the general, as the defense minister from Israel, I was retired around 14, 15 years old in America. I have the earbuds is what happened. Howard got the ideal from the Gaza Strip, the Giza, the stars of Giza above the pyramids, which he started the satellite. All the satellite system was created by Howard Hughes. He was a genius. I am the one connected to the satellite. If you go to YouTube.com, Google, you'll find out that George Bush talks about the Universal Soldier. He has to pay $500 million in a Congressional Medal of Honor to also intercepted. That's you? Yes, sir. That is me. The Universal Soldier, which I've done 20 years of duty for George, starting in the Clinton era, all the way up to just here recently what happens is this is the this is the what happens they crush your skull this fits the crown this is why my head is so unusual i am also an, uh, anointed with the dot right here and i have a shunt i have uh, not to uh, embarrass anybody but i have brown genitals from the uh, dawning oil and also shunted where I, they cut me open from my uh, colon around to the, the scrotum and they apply a shrunk shunt as a warrior, ancient warriors from Israel and the, the seven tribes area were. That's exactly how they was designed and that's how I am. I have all the proof on me and I have CDs that show you neck chokers from Israel, choking devices for intelligence officers and the wiring harness and I also have, which I will give Dennis a CD as soon as we get done here, to show it has 
the device inside the eardrum that they have kept track of me from all all these years. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, that was his brain, an x-ray of his brain. He claims to have some computer chip or something. I don't understand what he was talking about. Maybe you do. I was virtually homeless about seven years ago. Found myself on the streets of LA going, okay, what am I gonna do with my life? And I started, you know, banging on doors, walking uh, from office to office, trying to find good employment, trying to find great things for possible scripts that some writers had given to me. But, but, but let's back up just a little bit. Sure. At the time, you told me that you were actually living in your car. I was time. living in my car. What kind of a car? <laughs> an old beat-up station wagon? It, no, it was a, an old snowmobile. Okay. And, yeah, Evie, my little, my little Evie. Where, you park it on a side street somewhere? Yeah, it was um, parked kind of um, just wherever I could find a place to park for a night or two. And, and understand too, the viewers, is that here's a nice lady who's worried that maybe somebody's gonna yeah, kill you or rape you or something very really scary. bad. First thing you do is lock all the doors, get the, the sleeping bag over you, and just pray that you get through the night. And you know what I always used to tell people, why not just throw a car cover over it? Like, and you think you won't even, you're <laughs> but, not even there. Then how can you breathe though? You gotta crack yeah, the windows right, and that right. can be scary too. Cut a but, little hole. But you know, living in the streets you learn a lot and you get a great appreciation for life and you come to value every moment. I went through a period where I suddenly had to deal right at that time. I found myself having to deal with breast cancer Ooh, and, uh, and got through that with um, really uh, focused effort and a whole lot of faith. And that's where my story actually started turning. Okay, so let, let's, let's, talk about, um, let's talk about where you're at right now, how your life has changed. Yes, it's changed and kinda, dramatically. How, how has it changed? It's changed because... Now, how long ago was this? This was about seven years, okay, and I never now. did it. But it took until probably just about, not even the past six months, where things started changing. Okay, really Deborah, so you, you really turned it all around. Yes. And so, where are you at right now? Right now, I'm living in a wonderful place in Malibu. I have a wonderful job with some great people. Who and we are me. right now in Malibu, in Malibu as we after speak. After I've gone shopping. <laughs> yeah, and you bought, you shopping. bought some uh, really nice things here. Some fun little, some gifts. little things to send overseas to some friends. And yeah, life and you're has working, improved. You're working as I'm working, what? I'm working as a personal assistant for a couple who live in Malibu. A very nice couple. Very dear couple, yes. And and you're stabilized and uh, extremely stable. And you have a bank account now. Yep. And, and I'm you have, well on my feet and getting you have nice clothes. Oh, thank you. And you no, you really do. I mean, you're able to go shopping yes. and yes. buy things. Yes, I'm able to need. do the things I need to do and get on my feet a little bit more every month. And 
never give up the never give up the hope that things will improve. You just keep going. Hi everybody, it's me Dennis Woodruff and thank you for watching another episode of The Dennis Woodruff Show. Keep watching. I got to go. I got to make some more shows.